Views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. One Sunday morning I woke up late Meet Mr. Monkey outside my gate When I try to investigate That's why the sad tale I now relate don't know what it is the monkey won't do. Don't know what it is the monkey won't do. Well, I don't know what it is the monkey won't do. Don't know what it is the monkey won't do. Well, I'm laughing, monkey laughing too. Don't know what it is the monkey won't do. I am your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It is Friday the 11th of February 2022 and you are on the clock with Erin Green on the sports. Now I can tell you what the monkey won't do. You going to watch the Super Bowl? The monkey going to watch the Super Bowl too. You going to eat wings and drink beer? The monkey want to eat wings and drink beer too. Oh. Whatever you do, the monkey want to do. Oh, you going to concert? Well, the monkey want to go to Dexter Dobbs concert too. <laughs> huh? Whatever you do, the monkey want to do. Uh, that's a Bahamian classic by Charlie Adamson. At least at that time, people making music. A lot of artists, just like with our reggae rhythms, right? A lot of artists are re-singing or covering songs. A, a, an original track is put out, and then they, a whole bunch of artists cover it. And so, in true Bahamian form, any cover Bahamian makes has to be better than the original. And so we claim Mr. Monkey as Charlie Adamson's song. Good morning, Mr. Sawyer. How are you? I'm well, man. Good morning. How good are you? morning. I am good. That's great. Good, man. good. Look That's here. That's great. I only get one housekeeping note to make, and then we're going to get into sports, sports, nothing but sports. First of all, driver of MV0299, I will refrain from calling the name of your company on air because it is a large, well-known national Company, MV0299, don't turn right on red in the 18-wheeler at Mackey and Shirley Street. Just don't. I mean, it's like, it's like you on the road, and then you see a whole line, like a whole offensive line or defensive line coming at you in your car. That's what it feel like, right? I just want to say to our professional and commercial drivers, despite the fact that you are not required to get any local certification to drive those trucks? If you were, I mean, despite that, you know that left on red was not intended for large vehicles. Never was. So why would right on red be okay for you? Come on, man. We got to do better. But most importantly, remember, the children are always, you don't have to mind me running out all the time. You don't even have to worry about the police and whether they're going to ticket you or not whether that's going to continue working as a commercial driver. Don't worry about none of that. Think about the children who watch you on the road every day and will eventually model your behavior. Think about that. Because I know you ain't thinking about the people you could possibly kill in your big truck. Thank you. That's the only thing we're talking about today other than sports, sports, local sports, Bahamian collegiate athletes, and then, I know... You come here to talk Super Bowl, Mr. Sawyer. But you well, know, you know, I mean, you know, it's the biggest, it's the biggest, it's the biggest game of the year. You know? I mean, that's what you say. Because Valentine's Day on Monday, and I guarantee that's the biggest game of the year, without a doubt. I almost invite you to come on my show to play the How Bahamian Are You game show, Valentine's Day edition. <laughs> uh, but for me. 110% Bahamian, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but for me. <laughs> As much you can see who I'm pulling for, I ain't going to tell you all yet. I'm looking forward to the halftime uh, concert. 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 It's not a show this year. It's not a show. That, that, that's ridiculous. Dre, Snoop, Eminem. Kendrick Mary Lamar. J, Kendrick in one show, one after. And so those tickets, like I see some people going to be paying $8,000 plus dollars. for the bleeders. Right. Like you, you got to take your blood pressure machine with you yeah. when you go that high in the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Some people paying thirty thousand dollars for the minimum for the for yeah, the for, uh, mid level. Yeah, I mean this is just this for is just one a, ticket. Yeah, yeah, it's not a family. Bush family Cook, rate. 
Okay, we ain't advertising. But this boy, he doing something special for the people. He said, if you thought you was going to go see Dexter Daps, come mm. check me. I can give you something, right? But Bush Cook, we're going to need a Super Bowl special for those of us who really would like to go, but we can't mortgage our house to go to the Super Bowl. Something. We're going to need something like that. <laughs> now, at the same time, right, when the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture talks about creating the environment and the physical infrastructure, the sports facilities to entertain and engage international sports, right? If you all bring the NFL and the Super Bowl to the Bahamas, I will go to every game. <laughs> Bahamians will not leave the stadium empty. We come in, buddy. Yeah, uh, well, all right, let's see. 53 players on either side. Then, all right, then you got the families of at least four, four people outside of them. So it's five, 53. Ministry of Tourism, that's numbers. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's some numbers. That's some, that's some Airbnbs. That's some, that's some extra mattresses we can need to have on the floor. And then, right. Uh, we can need to get that together. Right. It's doable. And then, and then we can need a stadium. A proper stadium. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have to talk to the sun and tell the sun, listen, come to the meeting. So we know where to put the stadium. Because yeah. when you don't come to the meeting, we don't know where to put the stadium. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> you know, when you, when you think about those numbers, right, like the numbers for Super Bowl tickets, when you think about the opportunities to bring in big stars as a part of a franchise of games to perform, mm -hmm. then you could see where the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture, where the government's focus is in terms of investing money into sporting facilities, despite our small population. Yeah, well, we, we made some uh, inroads a few years ago at the National Relay Championships. I don't know if you remember that. Right, right, the, uh, with the, the I, IAFF? Uh, the IAAF. IAAF, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we made some strides. It's, it's doable, yeah. you know, on a, on a smaller scale, but still international. Yeah, absolutely. And look here, so I just want to talk a little Bahamian sports, and then we're getting back in yeah, yeah. to the NFL. No problem. Pauline Davis released a memoir yesterday, Running Sideways. I heard. The Olympic champion who made track and field history. And for my young folks out there, Pauline is a golden girl, girl right? She won the 4x1 as part of the team in 4x1 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney. Sydney. Mm -hmm. And then she won the 200-meter goal. I mean, she won it, you know. But we just had to wait for Marion Jones to catch herself and, you mm -hmm. know, tell the people that I didn't she, really play fair. Yeah. And Pauline got it. And I want to say congratulations to Pauline. Uh, Eric, I know you don't know this, right? But um, I've been challenging Pauline. I hope she's listening. I've been challenging her because I see her at the farmer's market okay. every Saturday, you know. I tell her the Chickchani catcher won a race with her. All kind of people say they won a race with me. The police say they won a race with me. The man with the, all the mango trees down the road, he say he won a race with me. Ain't none of them could catch me. We don't test that. But Pauline, <laughs> right? So yeah, I've, been, yes. I've been goosey and Pauline. I tell her I only need a year. Yeah, at least. A year, to, at least a year mm -hmm. to prepare. Right. Because the down payment on these knees. Is, is uh, yeah, yeah. sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I want to say good morning and congratulations to Pauline. Yes. on uh, the release of her book, Running Sideways, the Olympic champion who made track and field history. On another quick note, a uh, team from Special Olympics Bahamas will compete in the Special Olympics USA Games this summer, June 5th through 12th in Orlando, Florida. And they are competing in track and field, bowling, soccer, and they call bocce ball, right? Bocce ball is like porking but on the ground, and you're only parking other people's balls. So it's sort of like marbles. Yeah, I just got to say that sound like marbles. Yeah, it's sort of like marbles, okay. right? Okay. And so when I saw that, it's like, listen, we should have Bahamians anywhere they play in bocce ball in the world, and please correct me if, if I'm incorrect, because I think the last time I did was on uh, Cosby Show, years ago, right? If, years ago, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. If people play in bocce ball at a uh, professional and at the Olympic uh, standard, then Bahamians should be playing bocce ball. We'll do very well. You know, we had years and years of trying to play stray dogs, years and years of that. You know, yeah. Years well, and years of trying to... But um, pocket. We don't call pro, it... Pro-um. Pro-um. 
tree rocks up in the tree to get mangoes down and, right. and whatnot. We have right. we have some straight arms here. Yes, absolutely. In yeah. fact, I gonna br- I'm going to bring on Dr. Ancelino Davis in a couple of weeks to okay. talk about the actual, not just a joke, but the actual local porking association. Okay, yeah, please do. I uh, let me know. Yes, because you tune in. you competed. I I did. I competed a few years ago yeah. in the Justice Gardens Olympics. I did in porking. In porking, yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. In the Corner Boy Olympics, yeah. Absolutely. So, just a couple of more s- local stories. Some big be- Bahamian collegiate action. We have Garvin Clark Jr. at University of Akron and Malachi McCoy at Benedict College. They played this week. Uh, got some, ha- would y'all call it hardwood action? Yeah. Got to play on the real court. And uh, they both came away with victories and say congratulations to them. You want to say con- to congratulations to the Windsor team? That's the uh, local rowing team. And they participated in the, uh, like, Bahamian Isaiah Ellis finished second in the men's high school freshman. One time division of the Southwest Ergometer Amateur Tournament in Dallas, Texas, this past weekend. So it's like they are a rowing team, but they were doing indoor rowing. So they do this thing for time then? Yeah. Okay. Right? Like they do it on a machine. Yeah. And I just want to say this, Eric, because they know we have a rowing association in the Bahamas. And they know that they had to find a way to outcompete, right? They had to find a way to get an advantage on us. And the only way they could compete against Bahamians in a water sport is to take, take the out sport the out the water. Yeah, take the sport out the water. Yeah. See, look at these people, eh? Anyway, congratulations to the Windsor School uh, at Albany six-member team. Samuel McCullen, who's the co-captain. Krishant Lang, who's the co-captain. Matthias Sims, Harry Winchester... Isaiah Ellis, and Angela Knowles, who all took part in the Southwest Ergometer Amateur Tournament. We also want to say good morning and congratulations to Bahamian collegiate swimmer Devante Carey and the McKendree University Bearcats. At the, uh, they competed in the 200-yard medley and broke a conference record in that event at the Great Lakes Valley Conference Championship in Indiana. And they lowered their own meet record uh, from 126.31 to 125.53. Congratulations to Carey, Devante Carey, as well as the other members of his team, Felipe Pinheiro, Caleb Law, and Graf Lichinski. Anyway, congratulations to all y'all. And then the last youth sport. Yeah, the water would have had to have been warm, because if it was cold, we wasn't going nowhere. No, but see, I find it's just the opposite. <laughs> I find it's just the opposite. In my swimming career, okay. I found that it's the cold water that makes you swim faster. You're and, trying to hurry to get out. And that's why Bahamians are good at it. <laughs> <laughs> right? We also want to say congratulations to uh, Finley McKinney Lambert, 12 years old, was awarded the title of Optimist National Champion at the end of January. Uh, and he was sailing at the Optimist National um, championship. He has been sailing since he was just four years old. Look at that. Oh, Lord. He's, he, he didn't finish taking his booster shots yet, and he's sailing. I'm telling you. Wow. i tell you. But we got this deep culture sailing in the country, right? And that's why we're going to have such a fun time as a country deciding what's going to be the next, the next national sport, right? Because I got, some, I got some new stories here that will suggest to all of us that maybe basketball should be the next national sport. I feel the exact same way. Right, but then when you see a little barefoot boy like Finley, McKinney, Lambert, winning this whole championship at the age of 12, and you remember all them little boy them on the family island, whether they had the opportunity to participate in a sailing club or not, who have been sculling and sailing and pushing boat and moving from bar to bar their whole life. Anyway, congratulations to all of those young, uh, bah- young and not so young Bahamian athletes, and congratulations to the Bahamian team going to the Special Olympics Bahamas in June 5th through 12th. And I think a special message from the team is 
We like Florida. So if you in Florida around that time, please go and support. Yes, go find please a team. Go and support. Link up with your Ministry of Tourism before you go. Or to find out. Yeah. To find out all the details. And it's a good outing. It's a good family outing if you're taking the family over for a trip to Orlando. It can't all be about Walmart and clothes, man. Absolutely, absolutely. I got a text here. It says, great show as usual. Ask your guest how he feel about the James Harden trade. And also, ask him if he thinks it's time to bring dominoes to the Summer Olympics. Well, look here, Texas. I think those are excellent questions. Because uh, they just trading in the NBA. If I had known they was trading, I would have bring like a, bi a bag of juju. I had to bring some juju for my boy, Heel. Heel, buddy. Yeah, Come man. On. Buddy in Indiana now. But is he going to be there forever? People are saying that he's going to stay. Um, he is good friends with uh, Lance Stevenson. They were friends with the, with the New Orleans Pelicans in his yeah. first year. And um, he was traded with a teammate as well. So so that's that's good, right? He's, that... a, he's a great sport up shooter. And now he has two two fellas on the team that he's very familiar right. with. Right. And he's a Bahamian. And one thing you yeah. know about Bahamians, they get in where they fit in. Exactly. They could read a room. Exactly. They could re and they could feel out people's energy. Exactly. Yeah. And they know how to put feelings aside when they're on the court. Truth. That is one thing. But the uh, Pacers, they have like 17 guards. I mean, they got a whole bunch of guards. What they could do with Heel and all them guards? Heel is a shooter. Like, yes, I mean, now the NBA has changed now. You know, it used to be point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and a center. Yeah. Nowadays, you have the stretch four, the wing. They call them wing players now. You know? Yeah. It's like Scotty Pippen, 3.0, 4.0. Yeah. You know, stuff along those lines. So you could play kind of, you know, like different roles and positions. Like a... Like a... Rethinking, yeah. rethinking Carl how you... Right. Rethinking the game of basketball. They just play at a high, high level. They just want to score. Everything about the NBA now is just scoring. Like a Carl, like a Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah. 20 years ago, he'd be called a center. And he'd just have to play in the post. Yeah. He has a very good three-point shooting um, record. Percentage. Yeah. Nowadays. Okay. You know, him, uh, Dirk Nowitzki back in the days. So while we're on the subject, right, I just watched this l small little documentary about uh, Rodman. The weirdest man in the NBA, Dennis Rodman. But also, perhaps, the most underrated player in the NBA. And uh, the person who was narrating the documentary pointed out that uh, Jordan recruited Pippin. Jordan brought Pippin to the Bulls. Um, not Jordan brought Rodman to the Bulls, but Pippin didn't like the idea of bringing Rodman. And because he was weird, and he was thinking about the transition into the team and how it will affect the team's energy. But Jordan told Pippin, look here, trust me and trust this boy. And what I know of Rodman is he's a team player. He's never focused on scoring. He never needed the ball to score. He needed the ball to make sure his team could score. Could score. Yeah. And, and that was, a, for me, you had, like you say, you had your, your power forward, you had your center, mm -hmm. your shooting guard, and then you had Rodman. And Rodman was a, a type of player all. Yeah, what, what um, the term that they like to use now is uh, positionless. So he was more of a, of a positionless player before it was even right. popular to say. Right, and know? defense everywhere and anywhere. Any and everywhere. Are, are, lo are new players, are they committed to their team in that way? Are they prepared to just bang the boards, beat up bodies, and grab balls off the boards? Um, a few are. A few are. Um, some, some, some of them are in it for the money. You yeah. know, because you can see by the records, you know, because you got some fellas who, as soon as they sign their big contracts, they all of a sudden have injuries. Shout out to John Wall, you know. Yeah. Great player. Four seconds, could move up and down the court in four seconds from basket to basket. Yeah. As soon as he signed his 200 something million dollar contract, all of a sudden he has injuries of the yin yang, hasn't played well, and hasn't played, has played sparingly, sorry, in the last three, three to four seasons. Yeah. It's ridiculous, man. Wow. See, because I think of a player like, well, first of all, I used to play basketball uh, recreationally in school, right? And then QC never really had any basketball team. Uh, and so I love playing defense, and I like banging about. 
And I think of somebody like Charles Barkley, right? Like I always thought Charles Barkley was a Bahamian because he always went on the court and put everything on the court. Do you think our Bahamian players are going to have an advantage in the NBA because of the culture of uh, a ruddiness, right? Of hardiness. We come to play. Ain't no clinic. Ain't no court nice. You got to go to sleep in pain yeah. if you get injured, right? And yes. it's something get that they game. right, that mm-hmm. they bring to the game that uh, other players got to match within them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we 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 have what it takes and you know, I, and I guess after the break I'll let yeah. you know what I believe should be done. All right. Uh, thank you producer. You are on the clock with Aaron Green on this Sports Friday with my guest co-host Eric Sawyer the 3rd. We're talking NBA, we're talking NFL, we're talking halftime show. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. in relationship banking. We take pride in getting to know our clients. You have access to knowledgeable, approachable ambassadors and financial coaches so that we can recommend the best product for you. At Fidelity, we care about you. From your financial health to your physical health, we can relate to you because we're just like you. Come and start your relationship banking experience with us today. Visit us online at fidelitygroup.com Visit any of our branches in Nassau or Grand Bahama or phone 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 for Freeport. Hello, I am Brenda Smith, Senior Manager of Training and Development and coordinator of the vaccination program held at the Sunderland's Rehabilitation Center. Medicines contemplating taking the vaccine can be daunting, but by getting the facts, you are placed in a better position to make an informed decision. I am happy to say that I am fully vaccinated. It was a decision I made after weighing the benefits of taking the vaccine versus the risk of not taking it. By getting vaccinated for COVID-19, I am not only protecting what I encounter, but also protecting myself from becoming very ill if exposed. I can't tell you how important that is for persons like me who have chronic health conditions like diabetes and hypertension. The trainer in me encourages you to learn the facts about the COVID-19 vaccine and compare the advantages and disadvantages. Remember, the greater numbers vaccinated, the greater opportunity for us to return to life as usual. This message has been brought to you by the Bloody and the Sandalins Rehabilitation Center. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It's Sports Friday with my guest co-host, Mr. Eric Sawyer III. Morning, Mr. Sawyer. Morning, morning, morning. So look here, I had made that mention about the national sport, right? I cannot be brothers and sisters in the dark, on the savannah, on the park by themselves. So I have to mention that uh, this week, the last two days, the West Indies Cricket Championship has been taking place. They didn't have one last year because of the pandemic, and the year before that it got cut short because of the pandemic. And I'm going to be honest with you all. You all know, all your cricket people are going to know right away because you ain't never seen me at one cricket match, never. My cricket skills are a bit limited, and you all cricket people are very 
<laughs> are very, very snobbish about your cricket, right? I, I, so, I love a good cricket match. But look here, I love it too, you know. But the worst thing to do is ask a Caribbean person to explain cricket to you. It's great for drinking. That's it's like ask a Bahamian to explain the Bible to you, right? They'd be like, how you get this all and you don't know these things? Yeah. But here's what I do know, right? So I know that there's six teams playing uh, and this... Uh, West Indies Championship is a four-day competition. It's first-class cricket, which means it's more than four days. It's four days or more on the uh -huh. field. It's the top competition, top-level competition in cricket. And uh, Barbados, Guyana, Jamaica, the Leeward Islands, and the Windward Islands, Trinidad and Tobago, are all playing. And so far, Leeward Islands versus Barbados. Barbados leads by 152 runs. Windward Islands versus Guyana. Windward Islands lead by 158 runs, and Jamaica versus Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago leads by 93 runs. My Caribbean people, we still in the race for national sport of the Bahamas. My Trinidadian people, don't forget the doubles. Don't ever forget don't the doubles. Don't ever forget the doubles. I mean, we love you all, but don't forget the doubles. Please. All right. So back to NFL. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So before I ask you and my audience to call and text and tell us who you picking for, who you pulling for, what, I mean, I'm not going to encourage you to gamble, but who you putting your money down on, mm -hmm. right? I got to tell you how I pick my Super Bowl teams. Yeah, because right? I really want to know why you have on. Go on, talk. Yeah, you know why I got it yeah. on, right? Yeah, I, so yeah go on. So basically, what I do is I go in my closet mm -hmm. and I figure who the two teams play mm -hmm. and how much clothes I have for each team. And if the more colors I have, that team win. So obviously I wear an orange today, orange socks, orange undershirt, mm -hmm. orange t-shirt. Mm -hmm. huh? Don't watch, I got one orange Tom in the car. Mm -hmm. I'm going to orange it up. I got one orange face mask on. Uh, even, your, even, even the string to your headphones orange. Listen, and that is how I decided this year, I am choosing the Bengals. Plus, the Bengals ain't never, ever, ever win a Super Bowl. They need a miserable woman like me on their team to push them along, like how Bahamian woman is push you to victory. Because, you, you know, you, you can't go home a loser. You that are, don't make no sense. You are such a Bahamian woman. Like, listen to your reasoning as to why you picking the Bengals. Wow! I mean, these, these fellas playing ball all year. Are you picking them just based on your wardrobe? Yeah, I mean that and the fact that a Bahamian used to be okay. on the Bengals. All right, fine. That, a little bit. That there is admirable. But, you know, everything else is... <laughs> yes, I mean, that's how I pick it this year. Okay, all right, all right, good stuff. Right. But the last two times the Bengals went to the Super because they've been twice before, you know. Yeah. They were beaten by the team, by the San Francisco Man, look here, I know why I bring you that hat today, you know. <laughs> Thank you, San Francisco 49 hat, courtesy of Aaron Green. Oh, man, I'm going to wear it Sunday, you know. I'm going to wear yes. it Sunday. Yes. Just because yes. your team lose don't mean that you Don't mean that you're not. A, exactly. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I'm not a cowboy fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a loser. So who are you pulling for? I'm pulling for the Rams. Pulling for the Rams, you know, but, um, because in order to be the best, they had to beat the best, and they already beat us. So that means that they they should they should come out the victors. Well, listen, they should let Bahamians commentate. They should let Bahamians broadcast over the Super Bowl, you know, because that is the number. That's the second rule to picking your team. Once yeah. we could have at least at least a forty in the booth. Yeah. No. We man. need a forty onks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to call the thing properly. So, but what does bike do it? You know, when your hand go up in the air, you yeah, know the motion. Yeah, yeah. When your hand go up in the air, and, you know. Because th that's the same thing as when you're driving. Right. What the bike doing? What the bike doing? All <laughs> exactly. the time. Yeah. Okay. But I see nobody calling in and telling us who they Oh, yeah. Are. Speaking of the text. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he made mention of the James Harden dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, James Harden is going to play well now for the rest of the season. He now has his wish again. He's a spoiled brat. Um, he didn't want to be the leader of the Nets while, you know, Kyrie was doing his his thing and, you know, and Katie injured. Yeah. He was the leader and he didn't like the role. So he decided he was going to leave after, he, you know, because he forced his way out of Houston. He got fat and in a week lost weight to play for Brooklyn. And now he he's with Brooklyn, got fat again, got injured. So he says, missed the last three games. So he says, and uh, I guarantee after the All-Star break, he's going to play again. But listen, they they trading him for like, eight, but they 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 trading him for like eighteen different people. Yeah, yeah, and guess what? And the Nets are now stronger because now for sure, for sure, with them getting Mr. Ben Simmons, Ben Simmons ain't never looking to score. So what's you the what's the lure with Harden? 
I don't. I, well, I mean, three four years ago, he was the biggest flopper in the NBA. I don't want no LeBron haters to say anything at this point. Good. He's the biggest flopper, always looking for a foul call, always flailing his hands in the lane, and all of a sudden he's this offensive juggernaut. He was not. He was just a fellow who could get in the lane because he happens to be a little bit bigger than everybody else. And he used to flail his hands like they were so good in him just to get a foul call to go to uh, the line. So he's a, he's a, he's a four-point player. Yeah. yeah. He's a four-point player. Exactly. Because I'm sitting there and I'm wondering, if they will, if they trade in like six or seven people for you, you got to be a big deal. But then I see Westbrook um, playing for the Lakers and then any kind of madness could happen. I want to ask you, why is Westbrook still playing basketball? Because he's owed $47 million. Well, that's basically it, eh? Yeah, like, I mean, you have to pay the man. And, so um, that's why he's contract, not playing if he, well. It, well, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, he's never been he's never been under this much scrutiny in this bright of a light playing alongside the king. Right. So now that you play... And now that the king is injured or out, sort of out of the game a little bit. Yeah, he just ain't in the mood. You know, not yet. We can ramp it up. We, we, you know, because I'm a LeBron James fan. I'm not, you know, I, so I, saw I was this, the biggest Laker hater in the world. I saw this little snippet saying that LeBron went back to the locker room mm -hmm. and told his fellow... To, and, I mean, like, he gave him a good Bahamian smack to tell him, basically, like, if it wasn't for y'all, I could be winning championships. I, I, I Is that remember, true? Is that I, real? I, I, and is I, it recent? No, the spoof was like three... Three years ago, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the real real in the Lakers. I remember the spoof. I remember the spoof, yeah. He said, hey, listen, man, you're gone, man. You got to go. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. They, they, they were still saying that Lonzo Ball was still his teammate at that point. Yeah, fuck. I remember the spoof. Uh, <laughs> wait, the king, the king got a big ego. I mean, so they say, you know, okay. but, but you know, but you know LeBron goes. Every time he goes on the mic, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just a kid from Akron. I play hard. I work hard. I do what's yeah, necessary. I mean, for my he can teammates. have a big head. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he qualified. Yeah. All right, but yeah. we've got a caller on the line. Producer, let's get to that caller. Caller, you're on the clock on Sports Friday. Good day, good day. Good day. How you do? I'm all, all right. Good, good. This guy, he knows my voice. What's going on, E? Hey, 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 buddy. What's going on? Wait, wait. I just can't. What's big, going on? Big Laker hater, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you still got a bull for them because you're pulling for LeBron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mikey. <laughs> Why, well, thank you, Cole. I, I needed to remember that. I needed to remember that. That's got to be rough for these Laker haters, eh? Oh, my. Thank you, Cole. Is that all? Boy, he just called in to throw some shade. Yeah, yeah, yeah he called in to throw some shade, boy. But That's you know, good it, friend. It, it, it must be rough. It must be rough uh, when your, your, your favorite player moves to a team that you can't stand. And I wonder how Bahamians are going to feel when uh, Buddy finally settles down in his home team. I wouldn't mind him playing for the Pacers. To be honest with you, I forgot the Pacers existed um, since uh, ooh, all of those. They made three-point shooting. Reggie Miller. Uh, Reggie Miller was the starter. Yeah, Reggie Miller was the premier three-point shooter at that time, eh? Yeah, man. He was He was everything. He was the... He was, uh, he was the creep off the screen, three point. Yeah, man, he, yeah, he yeah. was everything. He broke Larry Bird's record. You know, right. And for most three pointers made, because yeah, yeah. Larry Bird was considered like yeah, the, the greatest, the greatest three point shooter ever. Then, then came Reggie, mm -hmm. and after Reggie came Ray Allen, and after Ray Allen, of course, this season we have Steph Curry. Yeah. Look here, Steph Curry is just amazing. Steph Curry, Steph Curry is uh, is my height, you know. Believe it or not. He's not tall, you know. I mean, I mean I, you're tall. I'm considered tall. Yeah, 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 in, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, But for basketball, he's a short. For basketball, he's a short man. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's for Curry is there's raw talent, but Curry it's has shown what discipline. Like God give you all the talent in the world, and if you committed to that vision, that dream, or as my you know Christian folk would say, you know the commitment of God's vision for you, if you committed to that, you could do anything. And this guy, he practices what he said. He take about two hundred and fifty to three hundred shots every day. Basketball after shot. practice. After practice. After practice. Yeah, yeah. And Lester Cox, uh, who's, who's local, uh, na well, national squash champion, right? That was his focus in terms of um, motivational speaking and, and preparing people. Is look, anything that you're gonna do, 
if you not if you haven't put ten thousand hours in it already, then what you doing with your life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my muscle memory is a serious thing because when you're tired, when you're most tired, that's when your body just reverts to what it knows. Yeah. And if you train your body to do what it needs to do, uh, you shouldn't have any problem when your body gets overdrive. When your body gets autopilot. Sorry. I- so I got a text here that says Bengals all the way. I got another text here that says Miss Green, Lakers, Lakers. Man, look here. I tell you, I was a Lakers fan, you know, but I watched that game and Westbrook just hit my heart. But he hit on the side of the backboard religiously, like on time. Like you could look for two of them a game. Yeah, but, but I get it now. So by the end of the show, I got like Westbrook. Mm-hmm. I'm going to write him a letter and tell him, call the Ministry of Immigration. See if he can get his papers straight to be a Bahamian. Because if somebody owed me $47 million and they're holding up on my money, mm-hmm. I may not have hit the shot either. No matter what. If he, if he wants to leave the NBA, the NBA has to pay him $47 million. If he wants to leave the team or be traded, uh, whoever he goes to has to shoulder that $47 million pay. I, look here, that just made me think of Colin Kaepernick in, um, in the NFL, right? But the brother could, Westbrook could do whatever he wants. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. Oh, boy, LeBron. I mean, you may be the king, but don't play with that guy. Well, I mean, you know, LeBron makes considerably more money than him. Though. See, but, and, but here's the point I make. We know LeBron could win without him. Because yeah. LeBron has won without, without him. him. Right. But the question is, can LeBron win with him? And he's not on LeBron's team. I mean, and he's on his team, but yeah. he ain't on his side. Yeah, he, right. Yeah, yeah. He ain't even on his jog. Right. Much less his run. Say it? Yeah. Uh, LeBron, you have to deal with that. Because I wondered if that's what is right? Is it, it's not about talent. No. No, because he, he definitely has talent. He, that's what he's hearing. Yeah, he, he can play. But I, I don't know. His confidence is, is as short as LeBron took the confidence of Paul Pierce back in the day. Yes. Yeah, he just took his confidence, ripped it right out. Whether he was in a Boston uniform, whether he was in a Brooklyn uniform. Yeah. Because no, LeBron is indeed the king. I mean, like, I could feel Shout you. Shout out to BJ. See, I could feel you on that, right? I, uh, LeBron's not my favorite, most favorite player. I'm a old, my favorites are still old school players, right? Yeah. Um, right now, I can be honest, I watch Reels and I watch Vince Carter just destroying people's feelings, just dunking. And, but then I look at a guy like Vince Carter, who had to have known early, sort of early in his career, that he ain't going to the championships never, right? Yeah, because he's just a human highlight reel, you know? Yeah, like he, after five years, with, he was with the Raptors for about five years, easy, right? I think after about five years with the Toronto Raptors, he realized he ain't going to, he ain't going nowhere with them. Not with Toronto. Right. But, move but on. the attitude to, to keep coming out and performing mm-hmm. and giving your all, all Every the time. time. But knowing that the chances are slim. I think of a boy like Iverson, right? I was just watching a small reel with Iverson last night. Mm-hmm. Um, from um, He never left his team. Yep. Right, committed to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah knowing he, he was traded, he never left. Right, yeah. he didn't want to go. No, no. But knowing that he probably ain't gonna never win nothing with that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tried in the two thousand and one, uh, two thousand. Yeah, two thousand and one NBA Finals. Yeah, yeah. He That's me. Time for another break, producer. Time for another break, and then I got a trivia question for you. And uh, then we can talk just a little bit more beat up on these Rams because you know the Bengals are going to win Sorry. the Super Bowl. It's time for a break, guys. Stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You're on the clock with Aaron Green and Eric Sawyer the Third. We'll be right back. <music> The new Guardian Radio app is here. Listen live to all our Guardian Radio shows and live video stream select programs in our studio. Get information about Guardian Radio shows and our hosts. Send messages including text, email, and even call. All from our amazing new Guardian Radio app. Download it free today in your app store for your Apple device or Play Store for your Android device. The all new and improved Guardian Radio app. Like what you're hearing on the show? Want to support the conversation? Sponsor On The Clock today. Call Janet Lees at 302-2304. That's 302-2304. Be the solution. Sponsor On The Clock of Aaron Green, where she dissects, we discuss, and you decide. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. <laughs> Welcome 
back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You're on the clock with Aaron Green. Now, Eric, it's obvious. You pull in for the Rams, I pull in for the Bengals, right? Yeah. Uh, ain't much, yeah. Ain't much uh, can happen in between. Who you think the, how much you think the Rams can win by? The Rams should win by six. Six goals. Six, yeah. Two field goals. Maybe a late touchdown. You score a touchdown with... Right. 13 seconds left, and guess what? With 13 seconds left, and Mahomes ain't on the other side. Shit. Buddy. Okay, you think it's going to be a running game or a throwing game? Passing game. Now, you're saying that, right? I'm online I'm hoping, doing some research. Hoping for it. Hoping for it. Doing mm-hmm. some research, right? And I found this trivia question on this website. Uh, and I just took it to be the gospel truth, right? As if I some footballer, aficionado. But it's such a, 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 an astounding stat that it cannot be true. It just cannot be true. What's and that? so the trivia question is, how many Los Angeles Rams quarterbacks have thrown a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl? Right? So mm-hmm. I know the Rams have been, this will be their fifth time. Yeah. So they've been to the Super Bowl four times. One, one. One, one in 1999. Yeah, right? yeah greatest show on turf. They, uh, last time they were there was 2019. Right. So we're talking, what's that, a whole 20 years? That's a whole 20 years. Yeah. From space, the, space in between, yeah. Right. Uh, I cannot believe they didn't throw. No, no, no. No, that's, no, that's, not, that's false. I don't know which website. 1999 Super Bowl, Kurt Warner threw to Isaac Bruce. Yeah, Isaac Bruce. It was a 70-something yard touchdown pass, and Isaac Bruce was, was actually injured. I think it was his hamstring. Something yeah. he had torn. He had torn something in the first game of the playoffs that year. Right. And did not tell the training staff and played the entire playoff. He told them after the game, listen, I've been running around here with a torn. I, I think it was his hamstring. hamstring. I think it was his hamstring, yeah. Yeah, and he caught that 72, 73-yard touchdown, yeah. The boy was injured. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, what are we going to have to check the whole NFL roster and find out how many of these boys them are really behemoth? <laughs> yeah, I only know Bayman who's hype. carry on like that. <laughs> you get fellas playing hype, man. Yeah, because you know the you know the Bahamian contingency gonna pinch you to pieces if they find out that you didn't play or voice you fumbled or you made a mistake or you lost because you were injured and you didn't tell nobody. Yeah. You was injured. Uh, he played and didn't say a word. All right, so that that stat is is not true. That stat is not true. Good, good. Thank you. Cause uh, no problem. I mean, that's just outrageous. If they had said it was the Bengals, I'd have believed them. I, I mean... If they had said it was the Bengals, well, I'd have believed them. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, I mean, I guess so, you know. But that's because I know the Bengals, we, long-time we, Bengals, right? Yeah, my boomer, Sireson, was there. Was right. that quarterback back then. And even before then, even before then, um, this would be the Bengals' third appearance Correct. at the Super Bowl. And the last two appearances was 1982 and 1989. Both. I remember when the mm-hmm. bank the Bengals was big when the Bears was man. Yeah. I was small. I, yeah. I was small, small. So if it was the if they had said it was the uh, Bengals, I would have believed it. But more than that, I would have believed it because the Bengals like rough uh, a turf. What y'all call that ground game team? Man. Mm-hmm. Ground and pound. Right, ground and pound. They were about forward. Rushing. Um, and and that was mm-hmm. in fact that was the game mm-hmm. back then, 1982, mm-hmm. 1989. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's only recently that. Um, it became a passing show. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and I thought it was a, it became a passing show because of uh, weaklings, right? Like you getting weaker players. It's really more of a passing game because of the high quality of the quarterbacks, right? With the quarter- and the receivers. Let's not all let's true. not give the credit to the quarterback. The quarterback can throw and catch. True. Somebody have to catch. True, true, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. I seen. Some, I mean, I seen some Harris. Who is that boy? Who Harris? Well, he's, he's uh. there. He played for a different team. By watching this reel, he's be hurting people's feelings every play. I think you're talking about a running back from the Steelers, Najee Harris. I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but he, he, he's something special. He's from Alabama. Last he, year was his first year in the league. Yeah. yeah like, he's something yeah, yeah. special. Yeah. yeah. That's the boy right there. Yeah. I mean, if I teeth in mangoes, I give the mangoes to him. <laughs> they can say nobody coming looking. No, they can't. They come and they yeah. can't find him. Yeah, they can't no. ca- and even if they find him, they can't catch him. No. Anyway, it seems almost all out of time. Yeah. So I'm looking at these um, 
the stats for the Super Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. Fifth appearance for the Rams, third appearance for the Bengals. Uh, Bengals, 1982, 1989, last Correct. time they've been there. These guys, I mean, did anybody but them, except for them, did anybody expect them to be at the Super Bowl? I actually did because they had beaten the Chiefs already in the season. I actually said, listen, don't sleep on the Bengals. These fellas have nothing to lose. Yeah. They, and they already beat yeah, these boys once. Yeah, they already beat them once. The quarterback, the running back, and the, and their quarterback, top wide receiver and top running back, all under the age of 25, these fellas have nothing to lose. They play in with house money. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, and their body, the, body don't hurt properly yet. No, no, their body don't even hurt yet. Yeah, man. They're, there's a joke that was said by uh, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis? I think, yeah, I think it was Ray Lewis that said it. He said that um, when you first come to the league um, and you play on Sunday... Sleep on Monday. I mean, sleep on Sunday night. Monday, by Tuesday, you're good to go. As you develop longer and longer in the league, by Thursday, your body finally starts to heal. Good to go. Then you get to, like, it's still Saturday and you're hurting. Okay, fine, I can play Sunday. When you wake up Sunday morning and you're still hurting from last week's Sunday, yeah. it's time to retire. Yeah, your body can't take it. <laughs> your body can't take it anymore. Yeah, and this ain't, and, and it's important for footballers to understand that. Mm -hmm. To understand that mm -hmm. you, you're not an ordinary human and, and you need extraordinary <laughs> yeah. rest. For yeah, you. extraordinary. And listen, I think this is going to be a wonderful weekend. Um, I want to say, my Super Bowl fans, right? Remember, the Ministry of Health and Wellness changed its re COVID restrictions. Indoor, I think indoor gatherings are limited to yes, 30, 30 people. people. Don't let not getting catch by the activity this weekend. <laughs> Let watching Super Bowl safely, adhering to the COVID protocols, be the thing. So and, and for y'all people with bars, when the commercial comes on uh, and you play your music, always remember to turn the music off so we can get back to the game. Y'all done no one see the $7 million well, this 30 is second it. commercial. I forget I to ask you that. who you think have the best commercial. But music playing, we can't get, we can talk about that next week. Who had the best Super Bowl commercial? But like Doritos, get are always my choices. Man, listen, Bahamas Air gonna be there this year. Ministry of Tourism got to be there, man. They got to be there. If we could be in Dubai, we could be there. Yeah, that's why I can tune in. That's why I'm going to tune in. But you guys, for real, I'm being dead serious. If you go into a Super Bowl event and you get there, and the place have too many people, Leave. call it a loss, go somewhere else. Just keep moving till you find somewhere that is safe. They're business people. Everybody open up. It's money for everybody because you only could have 30 people in your spot, eh? Right. Let's share the, yes. share the fun. Yes. Have a good time. Yes. Valentine's Day coming up on Monday. So, dear lovers, if your partner love football, let them love football this weekend. Let that be their Valentine's Day gift. We'll see you on Monday, but stay tuned because Levon Miller and Unleash is up next. Even if I can tell my boy goodbye. <laughs> so you all have a great day. Thank you, producer. We are out of here. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer. Thank you very much, Aaron. I'll see you later. Absolutely. Next week. Next week. All right.